get to have the opportunity and privilege to talk about the probably one of the most pol polarizing things going on in healthcare right now. So with us, I think we can start with introductions and then go from there. Yeah, hi everyone. <coughs> um, I'm Jackie Finn. I head up digital health at Cambridge Consultants, who are a product development and tech uh, consulting company. And I'm Mike Jacobs, and I'm the blockchain evangelist for Optum, which is part of the United Health Group. Yeah, no, so that's great. I think, you know, when we were having these phone conversations, we were talking about where things will go. And I think, yeah. you know, blockchain has been the topic of this year. But, and, and it's been, you know, very much pros and very much cons. You know, I think the CEO of JP Morgan last year in 2017 said, blockchain is the biggest fraud. Right? And That's then you right. have Warren Buffett. Yeah, I thought he said yeah. Bitcoin yesterday. Was, but, Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah. So there you go. And there's so, a confusion point right there. Exactly. So, people perfect. So that's why, that's why we're going to go into it, right? And I, I just came back from JP Morgan. And, you know, the, the oracle of the venture and finance side, Warren Buffett said, you know, all of this is going to come to a very bad end. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to, love to kind of hear, maybe for my, my education and everyone else in the crowd, because this is such a, you know, interesting path that we're going on. I'd love to, uh, you know, get some get some true insights and education from uh, from the real evangelists here. All right. <laughs> so, um, you know, one of the first questions a lot of people ask is, so what is this <clears throat> blockchain thing? And there's um, quite a bit of conflation with cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. with blockchain. And, and Bitcoin was one of the first um, was the first implementation of blockchain technology. So, blockchain is really the foundational technology powering Bitcoin and, uh, and the hundreds of others of, of cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. And uh, many of other industries, including financial and healthcare, are realizing that there's some value to that. So the question then becomes, so if it's not Bitcoin, what is the blockchain itself? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, a blockchain is like a specialized database. And um, so if you think about a database, uh, one of the um, benefits of a, of a database when multiple companies want to access common information is that you'd like to have a single source of truth. But if you had a centralized authority uh, controlling that information, you do have some business risk and technology risks associated with that single database. Mm -hmm. So what a blockchain does is distributes that responsibility across multiple computers, creating a distributed database that is um, cooperatively owned by all the companies involved in the transactions, yeah. and so um, the one of the fa so one of the facets of the blockchain is this distributed database. Now the second thing is, is that it's a specialized database in that uh, as transactions are added, it's a, an append-only kind of transaction, and what that provides is a chronological history of everything that goes on. Mm -hmm. Now, because it's also distributed, you'd want to be sure that it's synchronized. So part of the capabilities of the blockchain is to synchronize the transactions across the parties who are of interest in those transactions. So everybody has their own copy. And uh, the last thing that really um, makes up the, the blockchain is the incentives that empower or ensure that it's a, a self-sufficient ecosystem in terms of ensuring people abide by the rules of, of actually using the blockchain. So, so that's very interesting. I think one of the other areas that I, I keep hearing about is it's the security aspect of it. Could you shed just a little bit of light there as well? Yeah, so um, part of my job is to dispel some of the myths about blockchain and, and um, the, the underlying technology used by a lot of the cryptocurrencies are intended to be for transparent and anonymous transactions. And so there isn't any... Um, real um, authentication or authorization involved, which a lot of people associate with security. But what, the, what it does have is um, a data integrity capability that ensures that when those transactions are added to the database, it's encoded in a way with cryptology to ensure that nobody can really tamper with it. So it, from that perspective, it's secure. But from a more traditional authentication or authorization, that's something that a lot of the other tech stacks, uh, blockchain tech stacks, are adding on top of that first generation capability. No, thank you for those insights. And Jackie, one of the reasons why I was excited to be up here with you is, you know, with your role, you and your team, from what I understand, get to talk to companies and vendors, you know, from small to the 
very large mammoth organizations or corporations as well. And you know, you guys are trying to find, you know, what are what are the real use cases here? I mean, in my yeah. mind, you know, my my mind jumps out is this is this something? You know, I think we you know we have a speaker coming afterwards that's going to talk about interoperability. Mm -hmm. And when those da data standards came back, you know, I'm, I'm of the firm belief that had we swung the pendulum just a little bit more, we could have had a real data standard. Mm -hmm. So is this something that, you know, keeps, you know, Judy Faulkner from Epic or Zane from Cerner up at night? You know, is this something that can translate in electronic health records? And if not, I mean, what are, what are some other use cases that excite you? So... <clears throat> When I was in digital health many years ago and people said digital health itself was snake oil yeah. um, and we're finally getting past <laughs> that, um, what I want to get across here is blockchain does not solve all the problems. So when I'm talking to clients, and our clients are mainly pharmaceuticals, biotechs, medical device developers, and if they're making a smart connected device and they need to know what the, to do with the data and we're helping them with that, um, if there are three conditions that I can see present in the scenario around their data, I can think about blockchain maybe helping. So if the data is dynamic, if um, the current solution that they're going to have is fragmented and maybe hard to manage, and if there is a suspicion of malicious activity, if those three things are there, then there's a red flag that, you know what, we could talk about when we're designing the ecosystem to put some blockchain technology in, mm -hmm. simply to protect the data yeah. um, and keep everybody honest. So I would say for my clients who make devices, um, the biggest, most pragmatic application of blockchain at the moment is counterfeit drugs and counterfeit devices. So um, World Health Organization estimates 10% of uh, drugs are counterfeit, 30% in developing countries. So that's not going to improve outcomes too much. Um, and it's really bad for brand equity if a massive blockbuster drug is associated with um, lack of outcome or poor outcome because it's counterfeit. So there are um, implementations in place. There are things called unique device identifiers that are mandatory and have to be on every device and serial number identifiers, SNIs, that have to mm. be there. Now, you can imagine that everything that rolls off everybody's manufacturing plant every minute of the day, that's a lot of UDIs and SNIs that have to be tracked. And at the moment, the current solution is that they go into centralized repositories, this whole hub and spoke. Yeah. If the hub goes down, you can't read, you can't write, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the most pragmatic solutions and things that are actually happening now mm -hmm. uh, are people like JP Morgan, Genentech, yeah. and Pfizer doing the MediLedger project, where they're looking at how they can um, address counterfeit by um, using a blockchain, but an Ethereum flavor of blockchain where you've yeah. got smart contracts and smart contracts, just like um, a normal contract, are there to facilitate and verify and execute and enforce. If the T's and C's are there, it goes automatically and mm -hmm. autonomously. And so what they're doing at the moment are um, projects where they're simulating their own supply chain yeah. and seeing if they can test the robustness of the Ethereum blockchain um, for handling millions and millions of transactions consistently and all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's proof of concept. It's baby steps. Yeah. Pharma is massively conservative. Um, I have a lot of clients who don't even understand digital health, so I have to take baby steps to help them understand. If you were then to go, oh, let's throw in a bit of blockchain, you might just, their heads would explode. Yeah. So there's going to be like a real, um, let's try it small, let's do these small permission-based closed blockchains, let's do a proof of principle, let's get everyone buying into it, and then eventually you can imagine <coughs> an open blockchain, and it will be far down mm -hmm. when everybody trusts, um, that it works, where unique device identifiers, you can just log in, just like anyone who's doing a Bitcoin transaction now. Yeah. They can log in, they can find where their Bitcoin is, you can find if a UDI is real or not, and if there's a smart contract that enforces that it's real or not, you don't have to buy it. Interesting. So it, it, yeah. it's going to be really transformative <coughs> to counterfeiting, and then Lastly, before I let Mike get some air time, um, <laughs> clinical trials, really important that we get reproducibility in clinical yeah. trials. 80% of them aren't reproducible, so how can you do metadata analysis to look at correlations and patterns in precision medicine? Keeps everyone straight. Wow, no, that's awesome. So that those great. two things, so, I think. I hope you guys are taking notes. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. So. Yeah, so um, as Michael <laughs> and Optum, uh, we have such a, a wide footprint in the value chain for healthcare that um, 
many of our um, conversations have heads exploding, but they also have people who are really, really excited about using the technology in ways that may not make sense. And so we spent a quite a bit of time trying to understand sort of a, a meta discussion around, well, when is the right time? What's, what's mm -hmm. the kind of business problem that should be solved with blockchain as opposed to could be solved? Yeah. And the one-liner I try to um, convey to executives to help them understand the nature of the use cases that are appropriate is when uh, loosely coupled or um, relatively unrelated organizations want to confidently share and audit information as well as automate processes through smart contracts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and as a result of um, a great deal of ideation that went on in our organization, we collected uh, hundreds of ideas and tossed out a lot yeah. and then um, began to classify them to try to find the patterns in, well, what are the patterns of the business problems that really should be or could be should be, I should be using the right word, should be solved with a, with a, with a blockchain. And um, they, they fall into uh, elements of three different kinds of, of business problems. And, and um, a particular business problem might have elements of any one, two, or three of them. One is the track and trace. Track and trace is um, because of the um, chronological nature of a blockchain. It makes perfect sense for pharmaceutical supply chain. Um, it could also be used for um, a number of other things like lab specimen tracking. Mm -hmm. um, the other is the automation of processes. Now, um, what I'd like to say about smart contracts, smart contracts is that capability to create business logic, is that at, at today's Today's technology, um, smart contracts are neither smart nor contracts. Um, they're, they're snippets of programming like, yeah. uh, uh, logic. And eventually, we'd like to see them become contracts <coughs> that we can use for automating processes like for value-based payments yeah. or yeah. You know, real contracts. And um, there's, a, there's a whole debate about um, how to make those legally binding, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. and, do you really trust a programmer to um, encapsulate everything the lawyer had in mind in the contract? Mm -hmm. um, but um, the, the automation of processes through smart contracts is another kind of uh, classification. So the first one was track and trace, second one is automation of processes. Um, the last major category is managing and exchanging of information. Mm -hmm. And this is where uh, ideas like longitudinal health record, mm -hmm. um, sharing of provider demographics, <laughs> Uh, lots, of, lots of cases here where today in the healthcare world where we have islands of information, where there's high cost in reconciling differences in the islands, where um, a central source of truth, a single source of truth would make sense mm -hmm. without necessarily having a central authority. Yeah. So those are the big, the, the big ideas. And we're pretty excited about the possibilities of, of using this to transform healthcare. Yeah, so, so the last one, I think, you know, when you think of you know, again, at J.P. Morgan, J J Vice President Joe Biden was there talking about various type of moonshots. Mm -hmm. And precision medicine is something that we're, we're talking about nonstop. And, mm -hmm. and look, there's a lot of value there. And I think the, the, especially the last example you gave was, it makes total sense, you know, where you can tie in social determinants of care, data from wearables, mm -hmm. data from electronic health records. Right. And, and then mm -hmm. also adherence tends to go up in these type of situations as well. So mm -hmm. my, my big question is not only as a, you know, with my investor hat, you know, I mm -hmm. think we're, as a firm, we're looking to make a, a blockchain investment this year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'd love the, the ideal formula, but another part of it is still healthcare moves and baby steps. Just like you said, you know, I mean, the yep. idea of 18 to 24 month sales mm -hmm. cycles, and then you pair that with something of, you know, I have this that does this today. If we make certain adjustments to it, maybe we'll be fine. How do you make the argument in healthcare that you know, this is something that is definitely tangible and, not, and definitely reachable as well within the next year? I really <laughs> like the um, proof of concept by Medrec. So Medrec won the blockchain competition last year in ONC. And um, it's quite an elegant proof of concept for giving patients sovereignty of their own data, even when it's in uh, different silos. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and it's been so successful that they're continuing to roll it out. It started in Boston, in Beth Israel. And essentially what it does is it allows me to understand, using a smart contract, such as it is, um, <laughs> all of the different providers that I want to share my data with, and then give them permissions and pointers and access to that data, empower myself to decide whom and how much and for how long and at what granularity, so that the doctor can make a really good prescription for me, understanding the holistic nature of all the previous prescriptions, all of my maybe possible side effects, what I'm on now, the longitudinal aspect of it. And it's been so successful. And I think what's elegant about it is that because it costs to put stuff onto a blockchain, what they've done is they've given medical researchers access to the anonymized metadata that comes from this yeah. information. And they've segregated it into different kind of buckets of information. So the reward for using your computing power to um, keep the network honest um, is that you get access to this data so that you can further your research. And then on top of that, they get to see what's trending mm -hmm. because you can pick a reward from a bucket all around asthma if that's... Yeah. Uh, and then they start to understand what's trending in the... Um, in the industry and where they should put their butts, kind so, of thing. Yeah. So, so that's might, quite elegant. You put the caveat right. of, of uh, what to do in the next year, and that might be a, a challenge for some of those use cases. So yeah. what is? So we're running out of time, but I'd love to hear what's your bold prediction over the next couple of years. You know, you're at Optum. You know, major organization. You guys just acquired the advisory board company. No pressure, you guys Mike. Also, no pressure. You know, you know, I hope. No one tweets this, so Mike doesn't get in trouble with Optum. So that's <laughs> yeah, but, but really, I mean, also, you guys started a venture fund that's looking to make, you know, I, I've had conversations with them. and Optum Ventures, I think, yeah. yeah, a lot of us are on this side of the, the world. I think, you know, the reach of Optum is very vast. And I think you guys have been successful in certain areas of where you've kind of been able to successfully predict things. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to see, you know, if you can... So this uh, is my personal opinion, yeah. not a company position. <laughs> in case any of my uh, management's <laughs> listening. Um, so uh, I truly believe that blockchain has the potential to revolutionize many aspects of healthcare. And it's part of our mission is to improve healthcare for everyone. And the, um, I think blockchain is going to play a role in that. And that Optum is going to take a leadership role in that. That, that was a very like uh, political optim answer. Yes. Yeah. 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 I value, I value my right? employment. I on. value my employment with optim. <laughs> I'll just say that. All right. no, maybe maybe you can share something. How's that? And we'll end it with that. Uh, I I think that uh, <clears throat> drug integrity um, and counterfeiting will be the first. Um, Thing to get there's a, there's a big body of there's a momentum behind it. IBM are doing it at the moment with SAP mm -hmm. for integrity of uh, temperature tracking. Um, as I said, Genentech and Pfizer, and there's more and more uh, Ethereum specific supply chain blockchains around there. Yeah. So I think that's going to be where you're going to see some um, some movement and s some some trust. Good. In amongst people, because eventually you want that to be an open blockchain, yeah. No, this is this is great. I mean, I I came in very much after you know hearing the Oracle Warren Buffett say it was going to come to a very bad end, and and now I'm kind of leaving yeah. with a lot of a lot of hope and, and kind yeah. of my I think entrepreneurial you manage your expectations, itch is to come back, yeah, yeah, and just yeah. do baby steps. Crawl walk, you know. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Crawl walk around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, guys. And, um, You're welcome. Yes, we'll go ahead and transition. Thank you. Thank you.